I like I like tangible things, I guess. If I can if I can hold it and touch it and understand it, then that's you know simple enough. You break it down into steps. Little pieces that make the puzzle. The work that I've been enjoying is green woodworking, where you, you work from the logs. So I get my logs and I know the orientation of the wood. I know where it came from. When you rive it and split it right out of the log while it's still wet, it follows the grain. It's a more natural, it's literally hands-on, but I work it while it's still wet. I always wanted jobs that you didn't know were a job. I never really had anyone say like, go to the zoo and, oh, you're interested in this animal? Like, you could become a biologist and make a career out of it. I don't remember that if it even happened, but I just didn't want to do something, you know, vanilla, boring. With woodworking, it's, it's just you and what you make of it. I grew up in a small beach shack in Lucadia, California. It is right on the cliff overlooking the ocean, and there's always some maintenance to be done, and we didn't have a lot of money, so it was, we were always doing things ourselves. In high school, I moved with my mom, who lived in Tehachapi, um, which is a small town at the, the base of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Um, not much there. It's got the Tatchby Loop, one of the seven railroad wonders of the world. Being an ocean kid in Lucadia growing up on the surf team and stuff then, didn't touch a surfboard for four years in high school. Instead started you know, doing more dirt biking or things like that. Just started tinkering with, you know, taking stuff apart out of necessity, but also you wanted to ride it, so you had to put it back together. There's a unique thing about like Japanese woodworking, I think. They were very aware of where their material came from. They knew the tree and they know the orientation of the grain. And typically, you know, if the tree's growing up, then they orient it up in the project. The people that were figuring these things out you know, 100 years ago, or these ancient technologies now, as they seem, are, there's so much to learn from those. You know, why they, why they did things a certain way, why they use certain types of metals and tools. You get to make of it what you will. I was in Spain and I had been sleeping, you know, in Barcelona, which was great. But then I went to this town, Alicante, and I later learned it's notorious for crime. And so I was sleeping in this patch of grass, and at like 3.30 in the morning, the sprinklers came on. I hopped up, and my backpack was gone. I had my, my debit card, but all I had left were the, the clothes on my back. I was wearing a plain white t-shirt that was no longer white, you know, I was like, various browns and yellows. <laughs> but it was kind of a, a liberating feeling also. Just a totally like stripped down feeling. With woodworking, it's it's just you and, and the material. And you're there and you're you're working it and you're understanding the way it wants to work. One time when I was in college in Orange County, like I was running food in a restaurant. And then the chef was like, hey, you're pretty, you know, interested in what's going on back here. Do you want to get behind the line and I'll like teach you how to cook? And that was the gnarliest job I've ever had. It was, it's so brutal working in a, in a fine, you know, establishment. It's fast paced, everything's hot and sharp and everyone hates you. And you get like no glory. When I was food running, I was making $100 in tips, easy, every night, on top of my hourly wages. 
then I went back to this job, but like it was fulfilling to me because I was learning something. And it was brutal. It was really challenging. But then I was just making like $14 an hour and no tips. But it was more satisfying in a way. My mom was dating this guy. He was a big old cowboy guy. He was a, just like a stone, like his hands were so rough. I remember like he, a black widow crawling on him and just go like that, like the gnarliest thing. But anyways, I was telling him I was looking for work. I just moved back from Hawaii. He's like, well, I got some friends in all business. And I thought like, I was ready to go anywhere. Like I wanted to go to Dakotas or Texas or anywhere. And I got a job in Long Beach. <laughs> we operated these machines that through loaded hydraulic simulation, created vacuum and pulled on vapors. Say you're isolating a pipeline to do some welding work or something, we'd pull vacuum on it to pull all the vapors out. So, you know, things don't go boom. We could be on a job where you're, you're working seven days a week for a month, making prevailing wages. But oftentimes there was, there's no jobs. We'd get like a four hour minimum to sit at home and wait. I'd get like so restless. I'd still go into the shop. I'd be the only guy there other than the people that were doing like logistical stuff in the office. But I'd be the only guy in, in, the, in, the, in the shop doing maintenance on machines and stuff. When it was good, it was good. But when you're sitting home, I was like, this sucks. And so then I had some free time. I had been like making a few things in my garage and I had no idea what I was doing. If you, you see a dovetail and you think like, wow, that looks so cool. Like, I'll never learn how to do that. And then I, I just got thinking like, well, maybe I should find out if I can do that and how someone can teach me. I don't know what I Googled, but I found Cerritos College, which is a community college. 15 minutes away from Long Beach in Norwalk. And so I, I took like, you know, the first classes that didn't require prerequisites. And then I, you know, got bit by a termite. I was really into it, I couldn't stop. Also, I wanted to be there. I had some great instructors that really pushed the students that they knew were into it. You know, I was making friends and a lot of a lot of opportunities were coming from that. Just from people walking by my garage. It became like such a, a, a passion that I was doing it on my free time. You know, neighbors started to notice and then they'd ask for picture frames or and then it started getting more and more larger projects, tables and beds and bookcases. My work, like, was just giving me a really hard time about, like, taking two days off. I, I was a full-time student in two days, and I was working five days a week. They all were, were always saying, oh, this big job's coming up. And it would always fall through, or we'd never hear anything else about it. And I took on more responsibility by, you know, getting my class A license and stuff. But nothing really, I didn't get a raise for it or anything. I was too busy with work and school to, to get to these jobs. And people would be calling saying, hey, where's that picture frame? Like, sorry, I haven't had a chance, you know, it, next week. The next week would turn into next month. Full-time job, full-time student, and then, try, you know, getting this opportunity 
people asking me to make them things for money. I was like, hey, I, if, if I could spend more time actually doing this, I think I could make money at it. I was like, well, something's got to go. My last day of work was December 31st, I think, 2007, 2016? Maybe. There is a story of like a, a Japanese woodworker. He he just like disappeared, and his his parents hadn't heard from him. And I, you know, this sucks that I don't know the exact number, but it was something like eight years. In Jap in Japan, they say like, you know, it takes eight years to become a master at something. Whatever. Don't sue me if it's not eight years. But eight years later, after his parents hadn't heard from him. They just didn't know what happened. Maybe he was dead. They received a package, and it just had like this perfect, like minutely, you know, delicate plane shaving in a box, and that was it. No, he didn't write a note or anything. Just this perfect plane shaving, the full width of the board, just so paper thin, beyond paper thin. Just a complete full shaving of a piece of wood. And so they knew that he had been away perfecting this craft. There is nothing else that I can even imagine doing or would want to do. I don't know if it makes me a sadist. I like the challenges. I like, I like the satisfaction from completing a puzzle and I just like the the way the material is. I like the challenges of it. I like the the outcome and the possibilities of what you can do with it. Which is why like I had to quit my job because it's just it's going to take me a lifetime to like to scratch the surface.